Welcome to the students to the homework help video, page 291 through 30 and 39 through 42. Let's go ahead and get started with your homework today. Here we go. Okay, uh, numbers 1 through 10, the directions say to decide whether you're given enough information to determine uh, whether or not WXYZ is a parallelogram, okay? Explain your reasoning, and here we go. Okay, let's take a look at um, number 1 here. WX is congruent to YZ. So put a mark here and a mark here. Um, XY is congruent to CW. So XY is congruent to CW. Okay, look at that. Um, we know that these two sides here are congruent, and we know that these two sides here are congruent. So what we know is this. Remember, when both sets of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then we know that we have a parallelogram. So yes, we know that we have a parallelogram, and the reason would be both sets of both sides are congruent. Okay? Moving on to number two. Let's go ahead and, and, and label these angles. ZWX, ZWX, this angle here, um, plus WXY, this angle here, equals 180. So we're going to go ahead and put numbers in there. We're going to go ahead and put, um, sorry about that, I have no idea what I just did whatsoever. Okay, we are going to put, um, we'll call this um, 100 degrees, and we're going to call this 80 degrees, okay? Now, what else does it say? ZWX, this angle here, is congruent to ZYX, ZYX, this angle here. So this angle and this angle here are congruent. So if they're congruent, and this is 100 degrees here, this is 100 degrees here. So here we go. Do we know for sure that we have a parallelogram? Yes, we do. Remember, guys, whenever you have one angle here, and it's supplementary to the two angles beside it like this, then we know for sure that we have a parallelogram. Let me say that again. Whenever you have one angle, like we do here right in the middle of two angles side by side, if these two angles here are supplementary and these two angles here are supplementary, then we know for sure that we have a parallelogram. So the answer is yes. And, the, and, and, the, and this, I'm sorry, this here would be yes. And the answer is yes. And the reason we know that is one angle is supplementary to its two consecutive interior angles. Or, I'm sorry, one angle is uh, supplementary to two consecutive angles. And any time that happens, we will have a parallelogram. Okay, moving on to number three. Wx is congruent to xz. This whole segment here. And xzy is congruent to xz. Okay? Now, uh, students, we have learned no theorems at all about diagonals being congruent to two sides of a quadrilateral. Okay, so no, I mean, it, it, it could be a parallelogram, it could be, but we don't know for sure, okay? So if we don't know for sure, then we have to say no. Um, we do not know for sure that it is a parallelogram, so no, we do not know for sure. Okay, number five, Z, w, uh, ZWX, this angle here is congruent to ZYX, ZYX. So we'll put a mark here and a mark here, okay? And what else do we know? Angle WZY and angle WXY are congruent. So I'm going to put two marks here and two marks here. So right away you should know, yes, this is a parallelogram, yes, definitely, because we learned that when both sets of opposite angles are congruent, then we have a parallelogram, and both sets of opposite angles are congruent. These two angles here are congruent, and these two angles here are congruent. So yes, we have a parallelogram, definitely. I'm going to go ahead right now and orally remind you guys the ways that we know that, that a parallelogram is that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, okay? Here's how we know when a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And I probably should have reviewed this at the start of the homework assignment, okay? Number one, when both sets of opposite sides are congruent. Number two, when both sets of opposite angles are congruent. Number three, um, when 
one angle is supplementary to two consecutive angles. Number three, and number four, when the uh, diagonals bisect each other. And number five, when two sides are both parallel and congruent, then we know that we have a parallelogram. Okay. So those are the five ways that we learned to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. All right. Okay, here we go. A triangle CWX is congruent to XYZ, triangle XYZ. Now students, if those two triangles are congruent, uh, let's go ahead and mark all of their congruent parts, okay? So here we go. If these two triangles are congruent, then I know this side here is congruent to this side here, and I know that this side here is congruent to this side here. Okay, so there we go. Yes, I have a parallelogram, definitely. Because look, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Uh, this side here is congruent to this side here. And this side here is congruent to this side here. So yes, I have a parallelogram. Okay, uh, number nine. Wx is parallel to Zy. So one arrow here, one arrow here. Also, Wx is congruent to Cy. Okay. Now look. Yes, we have, yes we have a parallelogram. Yes, we learned that if um, two sides, two opposite sides, this side and this side, we learned that if two sides of a quadrilateral are both um, parallel and congruent then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And look, we have this side here and this side here. They are both parallel and they are both congruent. So yes, we have a parallelogram, definitely. Okay, students, moving on to number four. Number four. Okay, uh, WO is congruent to OY. So WO is congruent to OY, and XO is congruent to OZ. So yes, guys, right away we know this is a parallelogram right away because we have a theorem that says <coughs> whenever the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then we have a parallelogram. And these two diagonals definitely uh, bisect each other. So yes, we have a parallelogram. Okay, moving on to number six. Angle WOX, this angle here, is congruent to COY, this angle here. So, put a mark here and a mark here. Angle WOC, this angle here, is congruent to x o y now students look um, we have not there's um, we have not learned anything about the angles of the diagonals helping us know whether or not we have a parallelogram we have no idea okay um, this is nothing um, at all so it could be a parallelogram but we don't know for sure so we have to say no okay okay moving on to number eight number eight here and it just dawned on me I kind of went out of order didn't I I went one two three five seven nine four six eight I'm very sorry I apologize okay moving on um WZ is congruent to WX and YX is congruent to YZ Students, once again, we've not learned anything like this. Okay, what we have learned is if opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then you have a parallelogram. But opposite sides, that means this side here has to be congruent to the side here. It is not. Okay, and it means this side here has to be congruent to this side here. It is not. So, no, no we do not have a parallelogram. Okay, we do not. Okay, moving on to number 10. Um, tri 
triangle W Z O. This triangle here is congruent to triangle Y O X. Now, students, think about this for a second. Okay, be very careful. Don't just don't just jump to conclusions and say the answer is yes or no. Let's mark our congruencies and see what we have here. Okay. Now, W Z is congruent to Y O. Okay. W Z. here but I mean <laughs> look at this I mean no we're, no we're good okay I see it now okay look guys so this angle here is is congruent to this angle here right so look what I have I have a line here and a line here cut by a transversal okay see that so alternate interior angles are congruent so um, I know for sure that this line here is parallel to this line here. Now look what else I know. Look at this. Remember, vertical angles are congruent. So um, whatever this angle here is with three marks, we'll call it, I don't know, 60. Well, that means this angle here with two marks is 60. Because remember, vertical angles are always congruent. Okay, now see this angle here with two lines is 60. That means this angle here is also what? 60. And see this angle here with three lines is 60. This this angle here with three lines is 60. Okay. Now if that's the case, then I know for sure um Boy, I still don't know, guys. I'm still not convinced about this because and if I was there in class, you guys should give me your input. The only thing is with this, um, this angle here being congruent to this angle here, uh, just once again tells me that this side here is parallel to this side here. Um, so I'm going to kind of hold off on this and, and uh, uh, think about this. And if you guys have any ideas, don't hesitate to call or email and tell me what you think about this. Okay? But I'm not quite sure. Now I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with um, not sure on this one because I'm not so sure uh, they did not write uh, their triangles here incorrectly. I think they want to say WZO is congruent to YXO. I think is what they meant to say. Okay. But anyways, moving on. Okay, students, for numbers 11 through 18, the 
actions say, decide whether you're given enough information to determine that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so here we go. Um, if opposite sides are parallel, do I have a parallelogram? Well, yes, of course, definitely. That's the whole, that's the whole definition of a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which opposite sides are parallel. So yes, okay, number 13. Um, two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. Two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. Now, guys, here's what that means. Here's a quadrilateral, okay? Two pairs of consecutive sides means this side here is congruent to this side here. And we might have a parallelogram, but we don't know for sure. Okay, the only way we know for sure is if both sets of opposite sides are congruent, okay? So no, we do not know for sure. Okay, number 15. Diagonals are congruent. Does that mean we have a parallelogram? Okay, now students on uh, first thought, on number 15, you might say yes, if the diagonals are congruent, then we definitely have a, a parallelogram. But I want to stop and think about that for a second. We know for sure that if the diagonals bisect each other like this. If they bisect each other, mark here, mark here, two marks here, and two marks here, then we know we have a parallelogram. But you think, oh, Mr. Earhart, if the diagonals are congruent, then we definitely have a parallelogram. But hold on a second. I can give you a counterexample like this. Watch. Okay, I'm going to draw this line here. And I'm going to draw a diagonal. Now I'm going to draw an equal diagonal like this. And then close it in like this. Look at that. There's a quadrilateral in which, theoretically, this diagonal here equals is congruent to this diagonal here. However, is my quadrilateral a parallelogram? No way. Not at all. This is a trapezoid, okay? There's no way that this side here is parallel to this side here. So, no. I mean, if your diagonals are congruent, you might have a parallelogram, but we don't know for sure, okay? So, the answer would be no. Okay, number 17. Am I going out of order again? I guess I am. Sorry about that. Okay, number 17. All four sides are congruent. Look, if all four sides are congruent, like this. We definitely have a parallelogram because I have a question for you. Is this side here congruent to this side here? Yes. Is this side here congruent to this side here? Yes. Then you have then you have a parallelogram. Anytime both sets of opposite sides are congruent, then you have a parallelogram. Anytime, okay? So the answer is yes. Did not mean to do that. Alright, number twelve. Opposite sides are congruent. Well, I just talked about that. Anytime you have a quadrilateral in which both sets of opposite sides are congruent, then you have a, a parallelogram. Yes, definitely. Okay, number 14. Two pairs of consecutive angles are congruent. Two pairs of consecutive angles are congruent. Um, no, not at all. Look, I could do this. 90. 90, okay, so look what I have. I have a pair of consecutive angles that are congruent. Consecutive angles means they're side by side. So this angle here and this angle here are side, these two angles are side by side. This is 90 and this is 90. They are what? Congruent. Now go like this. There we go. I have two consecutive angles that are congruent, but do I have a parallelogram? Not at all, no. Definitely not. Okay, moving on to number 14, or number 16. Diagonals bisect each other. Well, yes, definitely. That's a quote from one of the five ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If the diagonals bisect each other, then your quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, yes, definitely. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Um, now, <laughs> now, be careful here on this one. If it would have said um, two, ang two consecutive angles are supplementary, then I would say no. But it says consecutive angles are supplementary. 
thus implying that all the consecutive angles are supplementary. So yes, that would be a parallelogram. I mean, look, if this angle here is 100, and this angle here is 80, they're consecutive angles. Now they're consecutive angles, and this would be 100. Now these two angles are consecutive. This would have to be 80, because it said right here, the consecutive angles are what? Supplementary. That means all of the angles side by side add up to 180. So these two add up to 180, these two add up to 180, these two add up to 180, and these two add up to 180. There we go. So look, once that happens, we have opposite angles that are congruent. Okay? So if opposite angles are congruent, then yes, we have a parallelogram, definitely. Okay? These are pretty good thinking problems. They really are. Okay, moving on to number whatever it might be. Here we go. Okay, we're going to prove each of these, okay? This will be interesting. Okay, students, let's start with number 19. Okay, number 19. You are given that AB is congruent to CD like this, okay? You're also given that AB is parallel to CD. Put an arrow here and an arrow here. Okay, and they want us to prove um, that ABCD is a parallelogram. Well, guys, we're done. We're done. Okay, there's your given. And then you can state that ABCD is a parallelogram. How do I know that? Because we had um, two sides that are both what? Parallel. And what else? Congruent. Guys, that's one of the five ways to prove um, that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Remember, if two sides are both congruent and parallel, then you have a parallelogram, okay? All right, moving on to number 20. Okay, here we go. We are given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So mark here, mark here, and we are told that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. There we go. Well, guys, think about it. Look at this, please. Look. I have a line here and a line here cut by a transversal. There's my transversal. Look. Alternate interior angles are congruent, okay? So I know this line here is parallel to this line here. Now look. I have a line here and a line here cut by a transversal. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So I know this line here is parallel to this line here. So that's going to be my plan of attack, okay? So here we go. Step one is your given. This is number 21. Step one is your given. Okay, next I'm going to state that AD is parallel to BC, BC and AB is parallel to DC. Okay, how can I state that? Alternate interior angles are congruent. Now look guys, as soon as you state that these sides are parallel, you can now state that A, B, C, D is a what? Parallelogram. By what reason? Definition of parallelogram. The definition of a parallelogram is both sets, <clears throat> both sets of opposite sides are parallel. So there we go. Okay, moving on to number, was this 20? Sorry guys, this was 20, sorry about that. Okay, moving on to number 21. Number 21. Okay, here we go. Now on number 21, you're told that triangle AOD is going to go into triangle COB. Now, guys, if that's true, think of all the parts that are congruent. We can state that this part here is congruent to this part here. And this part here is congruent to this part here. Okay? Now, how did, now students, how did I know that? Because, look, AO is congruent to CO. So, AO, OC. Um, DO is congruent to OB. D-O-O-B. So look, guys, if these two triangles are congruent, which they are, then I can state these parts are congruent. And then look, your diagonals are bisecting each other. 
So as soon as you, as soon as you know your diagonals are bisecting each other, then you're good. You can state that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So here we go. Number one is by given, okay? Number one is by given. Okay, number two. I'm going to state that what? AO is congruent to OC. And DO is congruent to OB. How can I state that? Uh, CPCTC. Because we know the triangles are congruent. That was given to us right here. Okay, now, number three. O is the midpoint of what? AC and DB. Definition of midpoint. Definition of midpoint. Okay, now number four. Um, once I state that O is the midpoint of both of these, then I can say this. Um, AO, or excuse me, AC and DB bisect each other. Definition of bisector. And now you're good. Uh, students, as soon as you state that uh, the two diagonals bisect each other, then you can state that A, B, C, D is a what? Parallelogram. By what reason? The diagonals bisect each other. That's one of the five ways that we've learned to prove that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. When the diagonals bisect each other. Okay. All right, number 22. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see. Okay, students, number 22. Number 22. Okay, pick up your given and put it over in your diagram. AD is congruent to BC. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Okay, now here's my plan of attack. Look, guys, I have a line here and a line here being cut by a transversal. Okay, alternate interior angles are congruent. So I can definitely state that this line here is parallel to this line here. Well, we're finished then. Remember, one way to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram is if two sides are both congruent and parallel. And that's what we have here. So here we go. Let's see how this works, okay? All right, here we go. Number one is your given. Okay, number two, uh, we're going to state that um, AD is parallel to BC. How can I state that? Alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay. Now, after I state that, I'm done. Because look at your given, guys. In your given right here, you stated what? AD is parallel to BC. So we have AD and BC. They're both congruent and they're both parallel. So A, B, C, D is a what? <coughs> Parallelogram. And the reason would be... Um, two sides are both parallel and congruent. Okay? All right, move it on. All right, number 23. 23 through 26, the directions say to decide whether or not you're given enough information to determine whether the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Explain your reasoning, okay? All right, is this a parallelogram? Yes. How do we know that? Both sets opposite sides congruent. Okay? How about 24? Yes, yes. Both sets of opposite angles are congruent. Okay? Okay, pretty soon. let's go over this again. I'm going to pause right now once again. I'm going to quote one more time the five ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Both sets of opposite sides are congruent, or both sets of opposite sides are parallel, or both sets of opposite sides. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to start over. Both, sides of, both um, sets of opposite sides are congruent. Um, both sets of opposite angles are congruent. Uh, diagonals by 
bisect each other. Um, let's see. If um, one angle is supplementary to its two consecutive angles, and then if two sides are both parallel and congruent, then you have a parallelogram. So there we go. There's the five ways. Okay, number 25. No, we don't know for sure. All that we know is this angle here is congruent to this angle here, and this angle here is congruent to this angle here. That's all we know. So no, we do not know for sure that 25 is a parallelogram. It might be. We just don't know. <clears throat> okay, number 26. Yes, of course, it's a parallelogram. How do I know? Look at the diagonals, guys. The diagonals are bisecting. How do I know that? Because any time this segment here is congruent to this segment here and this segment here is congruent to this segment here, then you have two diagonals that are bisecting. Okay? All right, moving on. Number 27, we're going to prove theorem 6 8. So here we go. Theorem 6 8. Now remember, let's see, the only thing we can use is. We're, we're, now look, we're allowed to use Theorem 6 7, okay? Don't forget that. We're allowed to use Theorem 6 7, okay? Because um, that's before Theorem 6 8. And Theorem 6 7 says if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, okay? So we are allowed to use that. Okay, I don't think we're going to need it, but we're allowed to. Okay, we're going to prove Theorem 6 8. Here we go. If pairs of opposite angles are congruent, uh, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So here's my quadrilateral right here. Go ahead and draw a picture. We're going to use our usual A, B, C, D. If pairs of opposite angles are congruent, so that's your given, okay? So you are given angle A is congruent to angle C and angle D is congruent to angle B. You are given that, okay? Let's mark that on here. Then we're going to prove that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Okay, now here's my plan of attack, okay? I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to add up all four angles, A plus B plus C plus D, okay? Will that work? Let's see. Um, equals 360. Okay, we can state that. And then for B, I can substitute um, uh, D. And for C, I can substitute A. So then I would have, um, let's see, if I did some simplifying, I would have A plus D equals 180. Okay. And that would mean, look, guys, if I know that A and D are supplementary, we learned this a long time ago. Look, if two lines are cut by a transversal, like this, in such a way that the two remote interior, no, that the two consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. So we can do this, okay? So this is my plan of attack right here, okay? Somewhere in my proof, I'm going to state that A and D are supplementary, and then somewhere in my proof, I'm going to state that A and B are supplementary, which would then make um, these two lines here parallel, and then I'm good. Okay, so that's going to be my plan of attack, so we'll see how it goes. It'll probably fail and I'll look dumb, but here we go. So uh, step one is my given. Now I'm going to run out of room, so I'll have to do some erasing here, so right quickly, okay? All right, here we go. Uh, number one is given. Number two, I'm going to go ahead and state that angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D equals 360. Okay, and we know that by how. I'm just going to put the formula, okay? I'm going to put um, 180 times N minus 2. That's how I know that, okay? All right, moving on. Um, I'm going to substitute, um, let's see, um, angle A plus angle B, and then for C, I'm going to put A, and for D, I'm going to put B. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify that real quick. So hold on one second here.
the same step, so I'm going to put um, 2a plus 2b equals 360. That's a nice 360, isn't it? All right, there we go. So, substitution. Substitution. Now, step four. Divide everything by two. Angle A plus angle B equals 180. Okay. Division. Division property. You see that okay, students? Now, look. I just stated that A and B are sub. I mean, I didn't really come out and say A and B are supplementary, but that's good enough, guys. So I know that A and B are supplementary. Okay? Right here. So look what I have. I have two lines here. See it? Cut by a transversal. In such a way that my angle here and my angle here are supplementary. So I can state that A and D and AD is parallel to BC. Okay? I can state that. So for step five, I'm going to squeeze it in right here. And then I'm going to do a bunch of erasing. I can state that AD is parallel to BC. And I can state that because um, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. We learned that. We learned four ways to prove that two lines are parallel. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. Corresponding angles are congruent. And consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this whole thing over again. I'm going to do the whole thing over again, okay? Watch. Here's what I'm going to do. We're on step six now, right? So I'm going to erase part of this. Now we're on step six. Is 
consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, here we go. So number 28, here's our, here's our quadrilateral right here. And like, like usual, we'll call it A, B, C, D. Okay, now for our given, we're going to state that angles A and B are supplementary. And angles B and C are supplementary. Okay? There we go. Now, our, our proof part, we're proving that ABCD is a parallelogram. Okay? That's what we're proving, okay? Alright, so here we go. Uh, moving on. Um, let's see. Okay, students, I think I have my uh, plan of attack here. Here we go. Look, if A and B are supplementary, this angle here and this angle here, then look, that means these two lines here are parallel because we have two lines cut by a transversal in such a way that the consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Okay, and look, if... B and, if B and C are supplementary, which they are, this angle here and this angle here, if they're supplementary, that means this side here is parallel to this side here because we have two lines cut by a transversal in such a way that the consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Okay? So, um, we're, we're really done. This is pretty easy. So here we go. I have my given, okay? There's my given. Now, I can state that AB is parallel to DC because consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Right here, uh, this angle here and this angle here are supplementary. Okay? Now, I can also state that AD is parallel to BC. Same reason consecutive interior angles supplementary okay this angle here and this angle here are supplementary right here in your given okay so you're done that's it so now you can state that ABCD is parallelogram by definition of parallelogram okay all right number 29. Now we can use um, theorem 6, 7, 6, 8, and 6, 9 if we need to to prove theorem 6, uh, 10. So here we go. Uh, theorem uh, number 29. Let's see. Um, if diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if we can do this quickly here, okay? Um, here's my quadrilateral. Okay, we have A, B, C, D. Okay, now diagonals bisect each other. So there we go. So you're given. Now you're, you're given here, students. Don't put, let's call this point E right here. Don't put A, E is going to go to E, C. Almost all that you can put for your given is diagonals. I would put AC and DB bisect. That's all I put for your given. Okay. Now for your proof, I would put you're proving ABCD is a what? Parallelogram. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here's my plan of attack. Listen, guys. If I can prove that this triangle here is going to ruin to this triangle here, then what do I know? Oh my goodness, I know this side here is going to ruin to this side here. And I know this angle here has to be congruent to this, this angle here. Look what I have. I have this side here and this side here, both congruent and parallel both, okay? 
So that's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to prove that these two little triangles are congruent and then go from there. Okay? So here we go. This should not be too difficult to do. So, first of all, step one is my given. Okay, step two. I'm going to state that AE is congruent to EC and DE is congruent to EB. Okay? And that would be definition of bisector. Okay? Right, moving on. Now, let's put some numbers in here. Call this angle 1, angle 2. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because they are vertical angles. Okay? Vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. Okay? Not too bad. Now, it looks like to me that I have side angle side of one triangle congruent to side angle side of another triangle. So I'm going to state that triangle AED is congruent to triangle CEB. Okay? And the reason would be side angle side. Okay? Now, now that you've stated that, look what you can do here, guys. Look. good is it all right never mind we'll leave it down there okay look what you can state guys now you can state this you can, let's put an angle here let's call this angle three let's call this angle four okay I can state that AD is congruent to BC and also I can state that angle three is congruent to angle four by what reason C, P, C, T, C. Now look, guys. Look, look, look. As soon as I state that 3 is congruent to 4, this angle here and this angle here is congruent. Look what I have. Look. I have two lines cut by a transversal. What do we call this angle here and this angle here? Alternate interior. They're congruent. We learned this before, guys, when two lines are cut by a transversal in such a way that they're alternate interior angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. So, as soon as I state that angles three and four are congruent, I can then state that AD is parallel to BC. Alternate interior angles congruent. And now look, I'm done. I can state that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. How? Because two sides are what? Congruent and what else? Parallel. Here it is. A, D, and B, C are congruent and they're also what? Parallel. This side here and this side here. They're both congruent and they're both parallel. Pretty cool, guys. Pretty cool. Okay, moving on to number 30. Number 30. Given that this whole thing here is a regular hexagon, prove that this is a parallelogram. Okay? Now, guys, here's my plan of attack, okay? Here's what I'm thinking. First of all, now listen to me, guys. If I have if I have a regular polygon, a regular hexagon, which I do, then I know for sure that all of the sides are congruent. I know that for sure. Okay? I know that for sure. Okay, I also know the angles are congruent. All the angles. Now here's what I'm thinking. Look, here's the, here's the quadrilateral that I'm trying to prove. 
here's a parallelogram, okay? Well, look what I already know, guys. Look, I know this side here is congruent to this side over here. Man, if I could just somehow prove that this side here is congruent to this side here, I'd be home free. Because if both sets of opposite sides are congruent, then I have to have a parallelogram. Hey, wait, I just thought of something. Look at this. Would it not be really easy to prove that this triangle here is congruent to this triangle here? And then once I state that this triangle here is congruent to this triangle here, then I can state that this side here is congruent to this side here by uh, ZPCT, right? Sure, and then I'm home free. So that's kind of the plan, attack, the plan of attack I'm going to use here. Okay, so here we go. Number one is my given. Okay. Now, number two, I'm going to state the following. I'm going to state that um, OJ is congruent to NM. Okay, so this is congruent to this. And I'm going to state that JK is congruent to LM. How can I state that? Um, definition of regular polygon. Remember guys, a regular polygon has all sides congruent, okay? Oh, something else I want to state here. Angle J is congruent to angle M. Okay, I can state all of this because I have a regular polygon. Now, watch this. I can now state triangle OJK is congruent to triangle NML. But what reason, guys? Well, look. Side, angle, side, congruent to side, angle, side. There we go. Now, look what I can state. This is so cool. Look, I can state that OK is congruent to NL. This is congruent to this. By what reason? CPCTC. Guys, as soon as I state that these two triangles are congruent, as soon as I state that, then I can definitely state that all of their parts are congruent, okay? Now, Let's see here, number five. Look what else I can state. I can state that ON is congruent to KL. How can I state that? Definition of regular polygon. Remember, guys, I've got a regular polygon here. In a regular polygon, every side is congruent to every side. And now I'm done. Look, I stated that this side here is congruent to this side here. And I stated that this side here is congruent to this side here. So I'm good. A, B, C, D is a what? Pa is a parallelogram. By what reason? Both sets opposite sides are what? Congruent. There we go. Moving on. Okay. Um, now we're going to, these are going to be really hard to do, so bear with me, okay? You're going to be challenged on these. Okay, here we go. Now, okay, on this one here we have, we're going to, on 39 through 42, uh, they're asking us to um, find the values of A and B so that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So here's what I have to have, guys. Please watch this carefully, okay? This side here has to be congruent to this side here. So I'm going to put A plus 3B equals to A plus B minus 1, okay? Now this side here has to be equal to this side here in order to have a parallelogram. So 5B equals what? 20. Well, this is a very hard 39. It's actually pretty easy. Let's solve for B. Divide by 5. B equals what? 4. So there's one answer. Now, let's go up to this other equation here. And everywhere there's a B, Students 
so everywhere there's a P, I'm going to put a 4, okay? So A plus 3, then 4 equals 2, then A plus 4 minus 1. So here's a P, I put a 4, here's a P, I put a 4. Okay, now let's, let's simplify over here. A plus 12, okay? Now let's simplify over here. 2, A plus 3. 4 minus 1 is 3. Now, uh, take your 2 and multiply it through. 2 times A is 2A. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay? A plus 12. Now let's solve the equation. Bring your A over here. Make it a negative A. Bring your 6 over here. Make it a negative 6. So we're left with 12 minus 6 is 6. 2A minus A is A. So there we go. We did it. When a, <clears throat> when a equals 6 and b equals 4, then we have a parallelogram. Okay, not too bad. All right, number 39, number 40. Okay, here we go. Now remember, in order to have a parallelogram, this angle here and this angle here must add up to 180. Okay, and this angle here and this angle here must add up to 180. So here we go. I'm going to take these two angles first, right here. They have to add up to 180, so 6a plus b plus 15a equals 180, okay? Now, I'm going to take these two angles here and add them together, okay? 5a, 6a plus b plus b equals 180. Now, let's simplify, okay? Here we go. Um, let's take this equation here. Bring it over here. Let's take this equation here. Bring it down here. Now let's simplify each equation. 6a plus b plus 15a. Well, 6a plus 15a is 21a. So I have 21a plus b equals 180. Okay? Now over here I have a b plus b. So I have 6a plus 2b equals 180. Now, guys, we learned this earlier this year, okay? I'm going to get this out of the way. We don't need this anymore. Guys, we learned this earlier this year, okay? Remember, we can solve uh, two equations that have two unknowns by substitution or linear combination. Now, I'm going to use substitution. Look. See this B right here? Watch this. B equals 180 minus 21A. Okay? bring this over and make it, make it a negative 21. And now look what you can put for B, guys. What can you put for B right here? You can put 180 minus 21A for B right here. So 6A plus 2, and then where the B is here, I'm going to put 180 minus 2, 21A equals 180. And now let's solve for A. Take your 2 and multiply through. Okay, we'll have this. We'll have 6a plus 360 minus 42a equals 180. Now bring this over and make it a negative 360. So you're left with 6a minus 42a equals negative 180. Okay, now simplify these here. A positive 6 and a negative 42 would be a negative 36a equals negative 180. Now divide both sides by negative 36 and you will get 5. Okay, 36 goes into 180 5 times. So there. Now come up here and where the A is right here put 5. So B equals 180 minus 21 times 5. So B equals 180 minus 105. So B equals 75. Okay, we did it. We found the values of A and B so that this quadrilateral here is a parallelogram. Okay, all right, number 41. You know, listen, students, in order for this to be a parallelogram, this segment here has to be congruent to the segment here, and the segment here has to be congruent to the segment here. Okay, so here we go. My first equation is B equals 3. That's easy. Huh. Done with that. Okay, my other equation is 5A 
minus 6 equals a squared. Okay? Now, guys, this is going to be really hard. Here's why I'm not a fan. I am not a fan of algebra 1, then geometry, then algebra 2. I'm a really big fan of algebra 1, algebra 2, then geometry. Okay? So some of you that have only had algebra 1, um, I've, I've really tried this year to give you guys only problems that are algebra 1. Okay? Um, so more than likely... I would not give you one of these on a test or a quiz, but let's still go ahead and solve it, okay? This is a quadratic equation. Okay, quadratic. So, I want you to bring this term over. And this term over. So, I have 0 equals a squared minus 5a plus 6. Okay? Now, there's two ways to solve this, okay? We can factor it, which is faster. Or we can use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is longer. This is faster, okay? I'm going to try factoring. Hopefully you guys remember uh, factoring from last year, okay? So here we go. What two numbers would multiply together give you 6? Would add together give you negative 5? Well, it would be this. Um, negative 3 and negative 2. If you multiply those two numbers, you get 6. If you add those two numbers, you get negative 5. So the factoring would be this. A minus 3. A minus 2. Now again, I'm not going to give you one of these on a test or a quiz. So relax. Just take notes on, okay? So, I take this group here. And I set it equal to 0. I take this group here. And I set it equal to 0. And I solve. So A equals 3. And also, A equals 2. So in this case here, there's two answers. There's an answer There's an answer to A, and also there's two answers to A, and there's also one answer to B. Okay? All right, moving on to number 42. 